Are you in the process of buying a home and considering a fixer upper? Maybe you're looking at the inventory out there, you can't find what you want, but there are homes that need some work and you're considering going that avenue. Or maybe you started the process with the idea that you wanted to find something that needed some work. You go in, do the work, make it your own, create that value. Well, in today's video, we're actually going to talk about the things that you need to know if you're considering a fixer upper. As a real estate agent of nearly 20 years, I see a lot of home buyers go into the process with one thing in mind and not considering all of the things they need to know. That's what we're gonna dive into in today's video. So if you're considering a fixer upper, you need to watch this. The very first thing that I want to point out here, and it is absolutely the most important when you're considering a fixer upper, is that you have to be realistic on the cost. When going into this, I realize there's a lot of TV shows right now on HGTV and across many networks that show home buyers going into property, spending a little bit of money, creating all of this value, coming away with this dream home, and it's not realistic. If you're considering buying a fixer upper, you need to be realistic on the cost from the very start. And if that means bringing a contractor in when you're walking through the home to get bids, then so be it. Or talking to friends that have actually done remodels and getting an idea of what they've spent on those remodels is another way. But what I see a lot of people do is that they're going in, they're watching these TV shows, and they see that someone did a kitchen remodel for $10,000 or $5,000 and think that they're actually going to do that on their own home with the idea that they're also going to you know, do flooring, do paint, remove walls. And you know it's not realistic in many ways, right? You need to go in with the idea of exactly how much you're going to spend. And now this is gonna tie into a budget as well. When you're buying a fixer upper, you should have a budget in mind before you ever purchase that property on what you're willing to spend on that property. And maybe that means going out and shopping some of these materials prior to ever making an offer on a property or ever finding the right property. You need to know what you're getting into before you actually purchase that property. And hopefully you got a real estate agent on your side that can kind of guide you through that process and tell you what is realistic and what's not. But I see a lot of home buyers going into properties, purchasing way over what they should for that property because they think the cost to remodel that property is going to be a lot less than it actually is. So the very first thing you need to do is have a realistic expectation of what it's gonna to take to make that home your own. The very next thing I want you to consider, which ties into the first thing that we talked about, is that every dollar you put into that property doesn't mean that your value increases by that amount. So if you go into a property and you spend a you know, $50,000 say on, on the fixer upper and making it your own, that doesn't necessarily mean that property is going to increase by $50,000. Now, maybe in some cases it does, depending on the upgrades that you did, and there's comparable properties out there that have those upgrades that have sold for, you know, X amount above where you purchased your property, but you can't go in with that expectation up front that every dollar you put into that home is going to come out in value. The third thing I want to discuss is getting the property at fair market value. Because we're currently in a real estate market with low inventory, high buyer demand, things selling very, very quickly, I see a lot of home buyers out there paying top dollar for properties that need work. And that's completely okay as long as you understand what you're purchasing and how it compares to other properties in the neighborhood. If you're planning to go in and make that property your own, you're going in to do upgrades on that property and try to create value on that property, you need to be getting that property at a number, at a price that makes sense based on comparable properties in that neighborhood, what the other homes have sold for that have been fixed up. Now, I'm not saying in this market that you're going to be able to go out there and buy a property for 50 cents on the dollar, you know, if it just needs cosmetic upgrades and that sort of thing, right? That's not realistic. But you also, as a home buyer, shouldn't be paying the same price for a home that needs work 
as to one that actually didn't need any work and sold at top dollar. So if you're considering a fixer up or a property that needs work, make sure that you're actually getting it at fair market value based on that property and comparable sales of that property and not comparable sales of properties that have already been fixed up. The fourth thing I want you to consider is location, location, location. Now I know you've heard that term and typically when home buyers are buying property, that's the one thing that we push is that it's important to purchase a property in a good location over everything else, right? Because you can't pick a house up and move it. And in a market right now, like I've mentioned, that's very competitive, I see a lot of home buyers out there going and considering property that isn't in the best location because they can't find you know, exactly what they want in the area that they want to purchase it in. And I recently came across a listing that needed a ton of work. It was a complete flip. Um, it was a true fixer upper in every sense of the word. But it's cited to a railroad track. Okay, it's cited to a railroad track. Not only that, but it had cracks in the foundation. It, it was a real piece of work so to speak. And, you know, I ended up talking to the agent. I talked to my client and told him, you know, where it should sell on that particular property. And we were, you know, in my opinion, where it was priced was priced extremely high based on the condition of that property and the location of that property. And so I told my client that based on that, that it should be about a hundred thousand dollars below where it was listed, at least because of the amount of work that it needed, but also due to the location, because, you know, even if that property were fixed up, you were going to lose potential buyers if you went to resell it at some point in the future, right? There would be people that wouldn't consider that property due to the location of it. But when I spoke to the agent on the other side, she informed me that they had multiple offers and well above the asking price in that case. And now we're talking about an area that is okay in a location that was awful on a property that needed a lot of a lot of work. It would be a you know a task as a real estate agent, as somebody that understands this process, that I wouldn't take on anywhere close to that purchase price just because of all the work needed. But yet there were people lined up ready to purchase that property. So if you're considering a fixer upper, you need to consider location as well. Just because you're able to go in and maybe add some value to that property, do some work, create some value, if you will. Uh, because of where you're a, you know, able to purchase it because of the condition of the property, don't forget about location, right? If it backs to a noisy street, if it backs to a freeway, uh, you know, anything like that, sides to a railroad track, backs to a, those are things that affect the condition of the property and in turn will affect the long-term value of that property as well as the resell if you decide to sell it at some point in the future. Last thing I want you to consider is to anticipate the worst and have extra money on the side to do additional work that may not have been in your general scope to start the process. What do I mean by this? Anticipating the worst means that you know you go in with the idea that you're just going to have to replace some countertops and do some flooring. Well, you need to have a budget money in on the side in order to do more than that, right? If if something comes up, right? You've seen the 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 HGTV shows and and the the flip shows and what have you where problems do arise through the process. A lot of it is for TV, but the reality is problems do come up, right? When you go to address something, it creates an issue where something else has to be done in order to facilitate the the first project that you were going to do, which, you know, is this domino effect where you're spending more and more money on things that you hadn't anticipated to start with. So you need to have money on the side. You need to have additional time as well, right? You need to factor in more time, more money when going through the process of doing a fixer upper because things typically take longer than than contractors say they will. If you're a DIYer and you're trying to do it yourself, you know, a lot of those projects can end up taking longer than you anticipated as well. So you need to factor in that additional time and have additional money on the side for projects. 
if they do arise. Now, hopefully, you don't need the extra time. Hopefully, you don't need the extra money, but it's something you need to consider if you're thinking about buying a fixer-upper. So here's where I want to reach out to you. If you've purchased a fixer-upper, if you're somebody out there that flips property, you go in, you find you know properties that need work, what are some problems that you've anticipated? Or maybe you were a home buyer purchasing a property that you didn't think needed any work. Did you come across problems? If so, let me know in the comments below. This is stuff that can help other home buyers who are considering buying property. And it, you know, it it helps educate and guide them through the process as well. And that's what my channel is all about. So do me a favor if you find any value in this content at all, hit that thumbs up, help me share it. And also, if you're considering buying a house, you're just starting the process now, not sure where to start, check out this video here where I dive into exactly what you need to know when buying a home in 2021. But for now, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the support. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.